What's going on guys, it's Jeff for Mad Hatter's Reef and a new video for you guys this week. Uh, this one is going to be about the aquarium stand that I built for my 260 gallon system. I have a video that is three, three or four years old at this point and it recently got knocked or shut down by YouTube uh, for some copyright infringements um, which aren't necessarily legit but YouTube runs YouTube so they can call the shots for that. Um, so that being one of my most successful videos um, that's going to be deleted and it's going to be replaced with this one and so there's a lot of frustration that's kind of got led up to this video. Uh, my GoPro which I filmed while I was building the stand so it kind of cuts down the filming aspect of it. I use my you know camera here but I also use the GoPro uh, so I can kind of you know keep working I'll have to stop start stop start because anybody that puts YouTube videos up and then films what they do uh, it slows you down quite a bit so the GoPro helps out quite a bit with that well the issue that my GoPro uh, got was a virus or something uh, it started chewing up SD cards not literally but basically I would um, put an SD card in it and the SD card was no good after that. Put another SD card in it, uh, no good. And it took me three, three SD cards, three large SD cards to figure out that there was something wrong with it. Because um, I swapped between this camera and the other camera. And um, so I narrowed it down to the GoPro, which I'm no longer using. It's old, it needs to be updated, uh, but it really sucks that I lost you know, more than half of the footage of putting the stand together. So I'm going to make do with what I got for footage, uh, and this is the video right here. So this is how my stand looks today. It's only framed out. I haven't finished it yet. Uh, I'll probably be one of the last things that I do for this build. Uh, but when I was in the concept stage, I basically just Googled do-it-yourself aquarium stand, and I believe like the third image that popped up was very similar uh, to what you're seeing in front of you. And this is also very close to a design that I saw at the uh, local fish store many years ago. Side note, the overflow is not going to be on the front of the aquarium. It's just there for figuring out the plumbing for the aquarium. So don't blow me up in the comments below. Jeff, you're not supposed to put overflows on the front of aquariums. I know, I'm not dumb. So moving on, uh, there's three very important measurements that you need when you're designing your aquarium stand. You need the width of your aquarium, the length of your aquarium, and how high you want the aquarium to sit. When I was originally designing this stand, I was going to use a type of uh, beadboard that I used on the original build for a stand, and that really uh, limited you know, how much height that I was going to have for the stand. Uh, hindsight, I'm looking at different options now, so I kind of wish I would have gave myself a little bit more room, made that stand a little bit taller so I could have that aquarium higher and not have the problems that I'm currently having with uh, putting stuff under the tank like my protein skimmer and the sump and the plumbing and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just going to make do with it for now. And obviously, you know, this probably won't be the last build I ever do, uh, so, you know, no harm no foul i think this is the third yeah i think it's a third aquarium stand that i've built and every one is a little bit better than the previous one so and right here i'm finishing up the last bit of cuts i cut everything all at once i didn't uh, do a little bit then go back i wanted everything to be the same length and have it all done at the same time and I believe the total cost of wood for the stand was $120, uh, not counting the screws, which I think I paid about $8 to $10 for that. And here's all the wood for the aquarium. So after I had that cut, I started framing stuff out. These clamps right here, I bought these at Harbor Freight Tools, and they are probably the best investment that I have ever made. And Harbor Freight Tools doesn't really always have the best stuff but these things right here i think they cost these ones the longer ones cost about eight dollars and they are worth every single penny and right here all i'm trying to do is just get the boards so they're flush all the way around and then i'm going to start screwing the uh, wood together 
right here I have uh, an inside beam. It's just there for the giggles of it, and so I can screw that outside one because eventually that's going to move in closer once I take the 4x4 beam that is upright and put that on the end. And with working with uh, 2x6, I'm going to be putting three screws on each end. And once I got one side done, I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. And same process, I'm going to have a support beam in the middle just to keep that friction tight between the uh, clamp and the side that I'm working with and then uh, tighten it down with uh, some screws. Once I had all four sides down, I went and started installing the 4x4 beams that are going to be uh, the pillars, so to speak. And I used the clamps again. Uh, what I did is I kind of clamped them into place by using the 2x6 on the inside and the ones that I had fastened on the outside. And for each 4x4 that I used, I did a diamond pattern uh, to hold it in place. And I did this all the way around for all six. Yeah, six, six 4x4s that I used for uprights. It was probably overkill on the screws uh, for the most part, but you know, it, when I'm using wood to hold up, you know, over 2,000 pounds of water, I figured you know it'd be worth putting that extra couple screws in there to make sure that it's being held in place. And once I had the 4x4 where I wanted it, I went and screwed the 2x6 on the inside in the same way that I was using. Uh, for the exterior one and here's a quick shot of the pattern that I used all the way around the stand after I had that side complete I went and worked on the other side and I did this for all four corners you know when you talk to other hobbyists there seems to be a little bit of stigma that surrounds using wood for a aquarium stand and when you think about it I mean yeah it's more safe to use a steel stand uh, it's more logical from a strength standpoint but when the grand scheme of things is your house built out of steel and for most people the answer is going to be probably not using wood for an aquarium stand is perfectly fine it offers you a lot of opportunity for you know customizing it and getting it exactly the way that you want and it decreases the cost overall this stand i think when it's finished completed it's going to run me about two hundred dollars the framing of it alone which i could leave it at that it cost me 125 dollars which is pretty close to what it cost me to build a stand for a 40 gallon aquarium so the point is a wood stand is not any less valuable than a steel stand from a strength standpoint i guarantee you i could probably put a small vehicle on top of this stand let me know what you guys think in the comments below what's better steel or wood now i'm working on the other side or the top portion or even the bottom portion i'm not exactly sure which uh, of the stand and basically following the same idea as what I already had done. As you can see in the background, I have the top half of the stand set up and ready to go. And I'm just basically duplicating this portion uh, to get it set up for putting the two pieces together. And cutting all the wood at once and making sure that it was all the same length really helped make this a faster process. And it also helped uh, so I could mirror the two pieces so it wasn't as much of a problem when once I put the two pieces together so once I completed the bottom and I had to basically wedge the top into place and for this I needed to call the assistant and once I got those two legs on the back side in place it locked right in and it was perfect once they were on top of each other all I went and did was the same exact screw pattern that I did on the top half to the bottom half and right here you're going to see me grab the measuring tape and what i'm doing is making sure that it's the same height all the way around so that i knew that it was square and plumb and once i had that in place i went around and started sinking screws in i'm not sponsored by dunkin donuts by the way that's not product placement 
I just don't make my own coffee, so I have to go and buy it. But if anybody from Dunkin' Donuts is watching, I will gladly accept your sponsorship. Mad Hatter's Reef runs on Dunkin'. So apparently I'm losing my mind, and I'm just going to shut up for a minute, and I'll jump back in when I feel like it. <laughs> I think the boy is going to get into uh, this aquarium thing, just like his dad. Every time that I'm working on a project of late, he seems like he's right there and he wants to know what's going on. He kind of helps when he can. So I moved the aquarium stand closer to where it's actually going to be. And the reason for that is it was starting to get really heavy with the amount of wood that I was putting into it. And I kind of wanted to make it as painless as possible. I try to do as much of this stuff as I can by myself, but with the size of the tank for this build and the size of the aquarium, I've reached out for help more often than I'm used to. It's a lot different when you're slinging 55s and 90 gallons around, moving up to a 200 plus gallon aquarium. And I'm not quite the bull that I used to be, so it's good to have friends that are willing to help out with this kind of stuff. And when I was installing the middle beams, for the stand basically i went on the concept of two foot on center from the edge of the aquarium and i think that's going to give it the most strength and keep it you know structurally sound if you look at the middle beam that i've already installed you can see that there's a two by four in between the two by sixes on the outside edge and the reason that i did that was to increase the strength of it probably a lot more than what it would be without it and I believe you know the original stand that I looked at or where I got the concept from didn't have that and when you have that much weight that's only you know screwed in on the face of that 4x4 all that weight is sitting on that 2x6 and if that 2x4 is not there in between those 2x6s the possibility of that just ripping off that 4 by 4 is pretty realistic. So that's why I went ahead and installed the 2 by 4s on the face of each 4 by 4 And originally I wasn't going to do that all the way around the tank, but I decided that it was probably in my best interest to do that. All it's going to do is make it that much stronger and that much more secure. So something I don't have to worry about later when the or basically eliminate the possibility of the aquarium hitting my floor, which wouldn't be a good thing. And right here you can see that I'm not pre-drilling and these screws are, you know, made to do that. But at the same time, pre-drilling, even though it's an additional step and it's going to take more time, I strongly recommend doing it, even though that I'm not doing it. Because it's going to give you a more refined 
better looking finished product. I intend to cover all this stuff up, so I'm not that worried about it. Uh, but it's going to eliminate the possibility of cracking and that kind of stuff with the wood. And it'll just make it look better, too. So here's the finished product as it currently sits. I guess this isn't the finished product. I'm lying to you. Uh, but, you know, I'm happy with the way that it is right now. It's definitely going to do the job. I just wish that, you know, hindsight, I wish I would have made it a little bit taller. That's the only thing. Other than that, I love it. Here's a shot of the corner, which it shows you how flush it is to the aquarium, which is awesome. I'm really happy with that. And I also used a fatigue pad on the bottom for the sump to kind of support the sump and uh, give it a little cleaner look. So that is the current state of my aquarium stand build. There'll be more videos coming and I'll keep you guys posted. All right guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. If you've made it this far, you're awesome. I appreciate you. Uh, if you're new to Mad Hatter's Reef, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and I will see you guys next time right here with a brand new video.